Hello fellow Scratchers! We had a lot of fun adding the ship mode in last week's episode of our exciting Geometry Dash series. And today we are going to finish the job. In classic Geometry Dash, when entering a portal, the vertical scrolling level changes to become a sort of tunnel with a floor and ceiling, and the position of this tunnel is centred around the portal that we last passed through. So we are going to need some clever scripts to determine the vertical position of a portal on our level. We'll need a new ceiling sprite, and we'll need to fix the vertical scrolling perfectly in place. No problem. We'll be doing this and more in today's episode, so what are we waiting for? Load up your projects from episode 7. And we'll save them as a fresh new copy. For this is episode 8, guys. Let's get scratching! Now, before we dive into adding these fantastic new features, let's quickly address two little bugs that you may have experienced from the last episode. Yeah, a lot of you noticed that we started to get excessive particles when starting our first game. Whoops, even when jumping through the air now. But as soon as we die and we start, the particles go back to normal. This little buglet was introduced in the player sprite under the green flag script. This forever loop to generate title screen particles needs to be stopped when the game begins, not just on death. So a simple fix, when I receive reset level, we stop other scripts in sprite. And that's it. Give that a run and all is well again. No more particles while we're jumping. Now the second issue wasn't as widely reported and you have to be quick to see it. I'm going to place the ship portal at the start of the level once more to show you. Now watch what happens when we die. Did you see it? Look closer. Yeah, we are turning back into the cube costume. So how many of you noticed that one? If you did, then comment saw that bug under the video. And better still, comment bug squashed if you have already fixed it. Right, I'll show you how I do it. Scroll down with me to the game on script and look at the forever loop. When we touch pale yellow, that's our spikes, then we broadcast game over and we end this forever loop. But that's before we set the rotation style and costume back to mode. So duplicate those two blocks and then bring them downwards to our game over scripts. And here we are switching costumes, not to mode, but to cube. This is the culprit. We'll remove the old switch costume and we'll replace it with the rotation and switch costume block from above. Nice, it's testing time. Smash that green flag. And now, bug squashed. Great job. And so we can commence with the meat of this episode, creating that horizontal ship mode tunnel. Now, when we're designing our levels, we can place our portals at any height. However, when the player enters it, the level is scrolled vertically so that the portal is perfectly centered on the screen. From now on, our camera is locked to a horizontal rail. Our problem then is finding that Y value of this rail. What I suggest is that on touching the portal, we switch to use a new hitbox costume that we can slide down the screen until it no longer touches that portal colour. Now we know where the portal ends, the bottom of the portal. We can easily calculate its centre too, and we'll store that result in a new variable, rail y. Well then, let's make that new variable right away, rail y, and it's for all sprites. Now we should make sure to reset it in the green flag script setting rail y to the empty value. However, I'll duplicate it as we're going to need two of these. One when the project starts, and the other right down here in the game on script, so it resets each time the level starts. Now to detecting the centre of the portal. We'll need that new hitbox costume. Duplicate the first hitbox, and we'll name the new one Hitbox Portal. 
To ensure it stays in contact with the rounded portal right to the very bottom, we need it to be relatively wide. So hold down the Alt key and stretch it sideways to a width of 72. Then move it downwards while holding Shift to keep it centered until its top is level with the center of the costume canvas just there. Good. Now we can script this up. Find the define check portal script. Now, just for a moment, I'm going to separate off the existing three blocks from within here as they want to happen last. And we switch to the new Hitbox Portal costume to do our detection sweep. We are repeating until we are no longer, that is, not touching the portal color. But until then, we move down. Change Y by negative two pixels. Okay, we should now be clear of the portal. Let's record the position with a set rail Y2. And we'll need a couple of addition blocks. The middle of the portal is located at the current Y position of the hitbox. Plus 50. That's half the portal height. And finally, Add to that the current camera Y value that we are already scrolled to. Perfect, we've found the center of the portal. So return those previous scripts to the end of this if. But hold on, having moved the hitbox down to the bottom of the portal, our player will now be out of position. We need to restore them back up to where they were before. Luckily, that's exactly why we added the player Y input here. So set the player's Y position back to the player Y input. Nice. And also, we need to switch the costume back to the hitbox spike costume too. So does this work? <laughs> Let's find out. Hit that green flag and head for the portal. 27, huh? Well, that does sound about right since the portal is close to the middle of the screen already. And subsequent attempts all come in with values roughly around the same mark, so that's good. Our next job is to scroll our level to the value in our rail y variable. So can you find the define camera tracking script? We only want to change this when we are on a camera rail. So if else, insert it after setting the last camera y. And what we're going to check is if rail y is greater than. If rail y is greater than the empty value, then all these original cameras tracking scripts can be placed in the else branch. That's what we do when we're not on the rail. But if we are on a camera rail, then it's very simple. Duplicate one of those change camera y blocks and remove the y position. So we want to scroll the camera towards the rail y value. And we are scrolling from the previous camera y. This should smoothly bring our camera to our rail y value. Shall we take a look? Jumping through the portal. Oh, nice. Did you see the level scroll up a touch? And now we can no longer bring the screen up any higher. We are indeed locked at the current portal height. Another test is to bring the portal up a little higher and try again. This time we should see the level scrolls up even higher with a rail of 55. Good job. So as well as fixing the camera to this rail, we also need to move the floor down so that it is only just visible on the stage. Okay then, click into the floor sprite and make it visible on the stage. We can manually drag the floor costume down until it's at the height we are after. Even lower than this. Lower? Yeah, so I guess for me, a value of around negative 100 in the Y will be perfect. It could be a little different for you, depending on the height of your floor costume. We'll make a new variable to hold this value. Name it floor shimmy and leave it for all sprites. Right away, set floor shimmy to not negative 100 but positive 100. Or again, whatever value you found looked best here. 
then to actually move the floor down. Find the when I start as clone forever loop. We just want to adjust the set y depending whether we are on rails or not, so we need an if else. Everything else goes under that, except the set y block. That goes inside the then branch and duplicate it into the else branch too. Now fill out the if condition. Are we on a rail? That's rail y is greater than the empty value. If we are, then we position the floor at the current rail y, but shimmying it down by subtracting floor shimmy. And finally drop that into the top set y block. Oh yeah, let's test. I'm expecting the floor to drop away now as I enter the portal. But oh, it did. But we have two floors visible. I left the main floor sprite visible on the stage. That's why. Turn that off. And try again. And there we go. So cool. That's exactly where we want it on the screen. But obviously something else is amiss here since we can now fly under the original level. What we'll need to do is place a lower limit on how low this camera rail can be defined. Click back with me into our player sprite and find the check portal custom block. Here we are, setting the rail Y. Drop in a simple if block beneath. We want to check for when the rail Y value is less than our floor shimmy. If it is, then it's just too low down and we set rail Y back to floor shimmy. If all is well, when we jump through our portal, the screen jumps up and is left with the whole level floor locked to the bottom of the screen. That is perfect. I'm really pleased with how that is looking. Now we just need to replicate this floor sprite as a ceiling sprite too, to close the player in. Well then, we'll duplicate the floor sprite. And name it Ceiling. We want to flip this costume perfectly upside down. Now you might think that tapping the flip vertical would do the job, but sadly it's not relative to the canvas, but the local costume. I do have a fix for that though. Start by drawing a rectangle over the entire stage, and then make sure it's snapped to the centre of the canvas. That's dead important. Then, oh, hold on. Let me make this shape an outline so that you can see this in action, but you don't need to do this step. Now deselect everything by clicking in some free space. And then flip vertically. Ta-da! A perfect flip. All you need to do now is then select and delete the large rectangle. How cool is that? Next up, a little bit of coding. Make sure we are still editing the ceiling sprite. We don't want to be setting these global variables in the ceiling sprite as well as the floor sprite, so remove them all, including the one under the reset level hat block. Now, when not on a rail, this ceiling wants to be hidden, so we can just scroll it out of view, set Y to 999. We can test that that works by making the ceiling sprite visible and then click that reset level script. Cool, it vanishes well off the screen. So, coming down to the when I start as clone script, when we are not on a rail, that's the second set Y here, we want the ceiling to remain off screen. So, once again, set Y to 999. But when it is on a rail, rather than moving the sprite down by floor shimmy, we want to move it up by the same amount to move it to the top edge of the stage. So that's rail Y plus floor shimmy. And pop that back in the set Y block like so. You know what time it is? It's testing time. Well, that's interesting. Why have we got a ceiling visible on the title screen? After all, rail Y is not set. Oh, I know, I didn't hide the main floor sprite. Oh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And yes, we have a ceiling and man, it is nicely positioned. The perfect mirror of the floor. 
This is spot on, and the player nicely bumps up against it when we fly to the top. Again? And I love how the screen scrolls up smoothly to reveal the new ceiling. That is so cool. So I'm really enjoying flying around the level, but in all honesty, we do need to introduce that second portal type to switch us back to a cube again. What do you say we look into that next? If you want to simply recolor my existing portal, then that's no problem, but otherwise, I have updated my Geometry Dash asset project to include the extra portal if you want it. Oh, and while we are here, you may also notice that there are some other new additions. Just in case, I've started playing with some nice costumes for use as the background and the foreground scrolling areas, but I don't expect us to use them this episode but I'll snag them anyhow. Into my backpack. Ok, so back in our episode 8 projects, I'll remove the previous level asset sprite, and replace it with the new one from my backpack. Then we shall copy that new green portal. So I'm going to place it on my level sprite, perhaps on costume 3. Yeah, that is looking good. We just need to trigger a change back to our cube form. Back into the player sprite. And we want the check portal script, which just happens to be the last one we looked at. Nice! A new if. To detect a new colour. We do need to make that portal visible on the stage though. Yep, let's see… there they are. So in the player script, carefully pick that green colour from the stage. And we don't need to do much to get back into the cube form. A simple set mode to cube for starters. And then reset the rail Y by setting it back to the empty value. That will allow us to scroll vertically up and down once more. And that is all! Amazing! Drag that down to the bottom of this script and pop it on the end. As always, as we run the project, we need to ensure we hide that initial level costume. Are you ready for this? Ship! The green portal. And we are back to being a cube. And we're dead. But yeah, this is excellent. Imagine what we can do with this. We could almost finish making our Stereo Madness level now. And when I have a bit more time, I most certainly will, but right now I'm afraid that this is all we've got time for this episode. I'm very much looking forward to adding in a proper scrolling background, perhaps some wandering background particles, and even better, an actual ending to our level. Now that will be epic. What are you most looking forward to? So if you enjoyed watching this episode, then please set that like button to a value of 1. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and enable that bell icon so as not to miss my next exciting video the moment it drops. Until then though, have a great week ahead and scratch on guys! Yeah.